Right now we are excited to sit down and talk to Marissa Smith. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Now you are the Senior Regulatory Toxicologist at the Washington State Department of Ecology and you study consumer goods and all the potential hazards there are within those. When you think of toxic chemicals, hazardous chemicals, that's really not the first thing that you generally think of, but how, how I guess, dangerous are they? That's a great question, and I think a lot of people feel that way. You're surprised to know that there can be toxic chemicals in the consumer products that you use every day. Um, and, you know, most products, the exposure is very small. But because we use so many different products throughout our day, these exposures can add up, and at a population level, they can impact our health. Now tell me specifically about the studies you've done with cosmetics and how they can actually affect people of color even more. We worked with communities of color in Washington State to identify and test cosmetics for toxic chemicals. We partnered with local health departments and um, social justice and advocacy groups and we're really grateful for all the participants that worked with us. Um, and we learned more about the types of products they use, why they purchase what they purchase, where they purchase their products. And then we selected products and tested them for lead, arsenic, cadmium, and formaldehyde. Oh wow, tell us about the results that you found. The results were pretty good actually in a lot of ways. We didn't find um, cadmium in any products. We found lead in three out of 20 products. And this is actually good news, it shows that products that don't have detectable concentrations of lead are possible. Um, and that's really important when you start to think about equity because we want to extend those benefits to everyone regardless of the types of products that you purchase. Formaldehyde can be added directly to products, but most of the time that's not why it's there. Most of the time it's there because a different chemical is added and that chemical breaks down and releases formaldehyde over time. And so when we purchased products to test for formaldehyde, we only purchased products that had a formaldehyde releasing ingredient on the label. Okay. So we did find formaldehyde in 26 out of 30 products, but that doesn't mean that most cosmetics have formaldehyde. What it does mean is that when you have a formaldehyde releaser on the ingredients list, we were likely to detect formaldehyde. So how did it disproportionately affect people of color? Explain that part of it. Some cosmetic products are marketed more heavily towards communities of color. Um, things like hair relaxers and straighteners and skin lightening creams. And these products, based on the function and what they do um, for your hair, <laughs> may also um, have toxic chemicals that can impact your body in other ways. Okay. And then tell us about now you're getting involved with the regulatory side of helping with this. After we published our phase one study, um, our state legislature passed the Toxic Free Cosmetic Act that passed about a year ago in 2023. And it includes restrictions for a number of chemicals and chemical classes. And it also, improved, uh, um, it also includes a subsidy program that helps us identify um, and, and promote the use of safer alternatives um, everywhere from the cosmetic manufacturers to salons that need support switching their product lines to compliant and safer products. Ah, so how do you get involved with the promotion of those safer alternatives? A big barrier to safer alternatives can be transparency. So what we can do as a state agency is share information. So we are working on conducting some hazard assessments, making those results publicly available so that manufacturers can make more informed choices. But we also have a subsidy program that can help reduce the cost to manufacturers and businesses. It's fascinating research and I think it affects so many people. So we appreciate you sitting down to explain it to us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thanks, Marissa.